Well, sperm has been grown in a lab and then used to create offspring for the very first time, mar marking a major scientific breakthrough, which could spell out the end to male infertility. Now, we're talking about Chinese scientists here. They're claiming that they've coaxed embryonic mice stem cells into sperm cells, which were implanted into eggs. The mice then produced a healthy offspring from the lab-created sperm. Now, this means a lot of things, Nick. First of all, male infertility, you know, affects 15% of all fertility cases. That's what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. And sometimes men don't produce sperm. And the fact that they've created a sperm cell that can then reproduce and create a mice baby, <laughs> a mouse baby, mouse baby, is pretty, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm getting really excited about the prospect of this because it, it affects a lot of people. And we're talking about, um, we're talking about fertility here. What do you make of this? I think it's amazing, and I think it's a huge breakthrough. And I, I always get so excited every time I get news of some organ or a sperm or whatever it is being grown in a lab. I, to me, I, that's the future. Like that's the direction we're going in. So every time I hear an update on that, I think it's so interesting. It's going to carry your genes, presumably. Right. I mean, so, pretty much. That's so awesome. half of the DNA, the mitochondrial DNA, comes from the sperm. And the fact that they're able to take a stem cell, an embryonic stem cell, they have to mix it with a cocktail of drugs and, of course, a testicular cell. Uh, the study is in-depth. I encourage you to take a look at it because it's really interesting. You know, prior to reading this, and it was actually insinuated in these articles, women don't realize how difficult it is to create sperm. In fact, I want to I talk about that for a second. One of these researchers, this is what he had to say about sperm production. Each sperm takes 10 weeks to make and must go through a sequence of major changes. For example, halving the number of chromosomes. If it is to be totally fertile, to engineer this in a laboratory is a huge challenge. The fact that they're doing this, Nick, I mean, we're one step away from biogenetically engineering humans, but yeah. it's still we, good. We also, though, if I can be a little cynical here, we have to understand that things uh, oftentimes are easily done in the laboratory with mice. Seldom times do we have the opportunity to re replicate that on mm -hmm. humans, and it's a lot difficult, completely different, right? So yes, this is a huge breakthrough because we got it down in the mouse, for example, but at the same time, we're a very long way from having the same results being seen in humans. Right. Well, this could affect men who've suffered from, mon from, from mumps, um, reproductive cancers, unexplained infertility. Uh, you know, this affects people who are unable to produce sperm. You pointed that out, that it's, it's one thing to talk about an animal versus a human, but the fact that they're attempting this, I want to say that this is legal in some countries. We were, I was looking at the That's reproductive... That's why they do it in China. Right? And that, that, the same thing you goes for all sorts of testing, yeah. <laughs> lab sperm to create a, to create a functioning I mean, human legally in Japan, possibly the UK. The, the, the US laws are unclear about reproductive and issues in fertility. Um, I couldn't find a conclusive law saying you can't do this, but there are stipulations. They no, there are. And, and you know, in, in, in a lot of aspects, we're actually behind the game and we're losing to countries like China, for example, because they don't have laws against, oh, well, you can't do this to a monkey. You can't do that. Uh, PETA, for example, would, would, would get on these laboratories' cases if it was being done in the U.S. if we were doing also all sorts of tests on monkeys that they were doing in China. Mm -hmm. um, so neurologically, for example, I mean, we're behind the game on, on, on doing all sorts of crazy uh, Frankensteinish uh, mm -hmm. experiments on monkeys because we're not going to do that. But, but we let China do it. And, and and so, like, you know, that, that raises some questions in itself. <laughs> but but it, it's definitely interesting, and they are leading the game in these crazy, like, breakthrough experiments, and it's interesting, and it I love is, to read about it because it it's cool. It is cooler. Well, I encourage you to take a look at the study if you haven't already. Uh, we're talking about embryonic stem cells that are then morphed into other types of tissue, and they're, they're promising major medical advancement, both for infertile lab rice, mice, excuse me, and possibly humans in the future.